Hey everyone, we are here on the shorelines of North Carolina. We're in a very special trip right now. Where are we, Erin? What is it called? Cape Lookout. Cape Lookout. Today I'm going to show you how to read the waves to find bigger and badder fish. my dad, I'm here with my mom, and we're all camping on the beach. It's, it's a crazy experience. Today I'm going to show you guys how to read the waves and find more fish on any beach you go to pretty much. It's a really important skill to have if you're trying to consistently catch fish when you go to the beach. It's not just a matter of picking a random spot and casting in a random place. It's about being able to read the waves. And I'm going to try and explain to you some of the fundamentals that I look for myself. Then I'm going to show you some of the fish's favorite hiding spots. Okay, so let's get into how, how do I pick a spot. When I first get to the beach, I don't just park wherever or just walk to whatever spot and just start fishing. I actually take some time to look at the surf and see what the waves are telling me. The best time to go is to check on a, on a low tide. Because low tide, you can see more of the structure out there. And structure is the name of the game. If you find structure, you'll find fish. And it's not too hard to find structure. What I'm looking for is white water and where the waves break. If you can see all this foamy stuff in the water over here, this is where a sandbar is near and the waves are hitting the sandbar, stirring it up and making it, uh, making it foamy like that. These are the areas that fish like to hide. They like to be in that trough right before the sandbar and they like to search for food and bait that are getting washed up by the waves hitting the sandbar. So this, this cycle of waves crashing into the, into the sand and creatures coming out attracts small fish, attracts bigger fish to eat the smaller fish, and we are there to catch whatever fish wants to bite our hooks. So now, let's get some bait on. I'm gonna show you where I'm casting. I'm gonna show you how to catch some fish. I have a feeling it's gonna be a pretty fishy day. Okay, so for bait this time, we've got big jumbo mullet. Oh, you're... Okay. We've got big jumbo mullet. Take a look. Whoa, that's a huge one. Just caught yesterday. And we're gonna just chunk it up like this. Oh my gosh. Okay, we don't want that tail. You want that. And I'm gonna cut it up for two different kinds of rigs. A fish finder rig, and a high-low rig. Okay, and there's our bait. So this can be for my high-low rig, and this can be for my fish finder rig. Now all of these I'm going to put with our new clams and I'm going to cut the clam just like this. Okay, now let's go bait up. Okay, all you need to do is hook it through once and that should be good. We're going to put a piece of clam on it too. And now this salted clam um, is very tough. So, it'll hold on and there will be bait on there even if crabs do pick it off. So, that clam is great. It catches lots of different kinds of fish too. Now that I baited up, I'm going to find my hole here. And I'm actually going to cast it right before that wave breaks. Because you see all that whitewash right there? That foamy stuff? That is the waves hitting the sandbar. And that means that stuff like sand fleas, mole crabs, and different crustaceans are going to be washed up. And fish are going to be there looking for fish and looking for a, a quick, easy meal. So I'm going to cast it in that area over there. Okay, now let's, let's set up the fish finder rig. This one's gonna go into the second trough. Here's the fish finder rig. 
and we're gonna hook it through one time again, present it like this. We've got a nice short little leader on here so we can cast it far. And then we've got a eight ounce sinker here so it'll hold on the bottom. Now when you're throwing this much weight, when you're throwing this much weight, you need to remember to, to tie on a shock leader. A shock leader will absorb the shock and the impact and also if you have braid on, it might cut your finger. It might snap off and the weight goes flying. It can kill someone. So make sure you have a shock leader on. Nice fish. Look at that color. It's really light colored. Maybe it's because the sand here is a lot lighter. It's trying to match that color. That's a nice one too. First fish of the day. And it's a nice flounder. I caught that last one on the white water in that foamy area right past it. Just a second past it. I think flounder like to sit right, bef right before that, that whitewash area. Fish in general like to hunt in that area. It's a nice ride. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. I hope it's a red. What happened? Yeah. I'm not sure. Where did it get off, you think? Put another piece of bait on. How big is your hook? You want this big? My, oh, my bait's probably gone now. The next book you should write should be a children's book called All My Bait Is Gone. All My Bait Is Gone. <laughs> and it's going to be a metaphor for life. <laughs> you have to keep restoring your bait. Rebaiting. Everything needs maintenance in life. And things may be running really smoothly for one second when everything's baited up. But you have to constantly replenish it. Bluefish, yeah, it's a good bait size and it's also a good size to um, to eat if we wanted to eat that. It's a cocktail size. A 
a little baby boy. Ooh, 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 butter, had a butter, butter. Keeper right there. Look at that. The fish finder doing its work. Woo! Took the cut bait. Let's give this fish a measure. I'm guessing it's a red drum. Sashimi. Can you say sashimi 23 inches? 23 inches on cut mullet. Oh my god. Hey, yours on the end. Get him, get him. Gone? He's gone, he's gone. I gotta get out and fish again. They're, they're, they're running right now. Okay. Look at that. Yummy. That's gonna catch a nice fish right there. Okay, so just an update. The hole that I found in front of me, I cast it in there, I've caught one puppy drum that is a keeper. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So I found one in the hole directly in front of me, which is maybe even like, it's not a very far cast. So I didn't have to cast as hard as I could for this one. My dad is over here casting, he's casting pretty far, but he's hitting bluefish out there. So, you know, you're gonna find different fish in different troughs and it's not going to be the same. This game is always changing. Uh, even, even the structure under there is constantly changing. So fish here today might not be fish here tomorrow, even in the same tide. So you have to be able to identify structure on the water while looking at the waves before you even start fishing in that spot. So a good a tip for me is to bring uh, is to go during a low tide so you can see more of the structure. When the high tide is so high you can't see, it's covering it up. Uh, when it's lower you can actually see the waves start breaking during the sandbars and stuff like that. So come during a low tide. But let's see what else we can catch in these holes.
on the clam combo. And that was right on the first trough, right past that wash like I was talking about. They're, they're out there looking for stuff that's being washed up. So if you're casting as far as you can and there's not necessarily any structure out there, you're wasting your time and you're wasting your bait. And it's all about being able to read the beach and being able to find structure and places where fish will hide. Okay, so now that I've gotten this fish, I'm gonna kill it right away. And this is not something I usually talk about too much or show, I'm not gonna show it, but I, think, I feel like I need to talk about it a little bit. When you catch a fish, I think it's, it's humane to, to just end it instead of let it flop. It also, it's better for the meat itself. So there's two reasons I like to do it. One, I don't like to do it. But two, one, I don't like to do it, but it's just the mo more humane way to do it. You don't want the fish to be suffering. Okay, so this mullet is like falling apart, so I like to put new fresh bait on as often as I can. I just hook it like that, and then I put a piece of clam just like this. So it's a medley of, of baits for them. That's a good size one. We're definitely keeping this one to eat. We're gonna make bluefish cakes. Do we bring do we bring relish though? Maybe. Alright. Let me see. Did it fray your line? Oh yeah, you better retie this. Look, it frayed it. If you get a big drum, you're gonna lose it. I know, right? You don't wanna use that again. That one's good. That one's baited up. Okay. All our rods are baited up. Now, it's just a matter of picking where you want to cast. Combo. I always get them with that. That's the third one I hit with the clams. Oh, that was close in. Hit it hard. Did you see that bend it over? So, we're technically allowed to keep one, two, three, four of them today because my mom's got a license, you've got a license, I've got a license, my dad's got a license. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fillet it up and roast it over the fire tonight. Oh yeah. That's one of the greatest parts about camping on the beach here. I'm pretty much living here for a week uh, and just living off the land. So pretty much after we get four, we're gonna release everything we've got from there. We've got more bait. All this fish is gonna be eaten by us or other fish or other animals in the world. Um, but yeah, this is living on the land. On my knees, grateful to the world for allowing me to take part 
Shark, probably. I bet you, man, you see that? My dad is, is on, was on so many fish at one time too. We got two flounder. Oh, I popped the hook. Oh my god! Look at a blue eye. That looks like a nice one. On the phone. Oh, he's calling me Mr. Blue today. <laughs> got nothing to blue. My boy there got. What just happened? He just washed. Are you okay? What happened? Oh, I had a cut and I had to put iodine in it. What a great day of fishing, both me and my dad. We caught a lot of different species of fish and a lot of it. Like, I don't know what I missed on that huge rod. Ooh. But whatever it was, it was, it was a big something. Uh, but that's, that's why I love beach fishing. You never really know what you're gonna get. You always have an idea, but the day goes as a complete surprise usually. That's the best part about fishing. It's always a surprise. One day the fish might be here, the next day they're not. So it's a matter of being able to read, uh, read nature and, and listen to what nature is telling you. And uh, usually you read it wrong. No, that's not true. Honestly, pretty consistently, I'm, I've been coming out to the beach um, in, in North Carolina at least and finding red drum every single time I go, catching our limit every single time I go. And that's after I started practicing, actually reading the waves and not just randomly casting. Uh, my dad had hit a whole mess of bluefish, a couple of flounder. It was a great day of fishing. Um, if you guys enjoy this kind of episode, we do videos like this every Thursday. Uh, we we here at <laughs> here at Hey Skipper, we want to help you guys get on fish. We want to teach you, and we want to make learning how to fish easy. So anyone who's just getting into fishing, or anyone who just enjoys watching fishing, subscribe to our channel. We make helpful tutorials on our website too, heyskipperfishing.com. We have entire crash guides. Basically, we put all this information into one little book for you to print out, laminate, and bring to the beach. It's not just beach fishing though, it's, it's all sorts of fishing. I write books on how to use different kinds of baits, how to use different kinds of rigs, what rigs to tie for surf fishing, jetty fishing, pier fishing. If you're interested in fishing in general, I suggest you check out our website, heyskipperfishing.com. Let me know what you thought about the tips on this episode. Comment below. All right, let's get back to camp. If you guys want to follow us, we're going we're gonna to cook up some fish. We're back at camp now, and we filleted all of our fish out. But look, I'm going to go fry up some fish now.
This looks so good. I'm so excited to eat this. Mom's making the coleslaw. Yeah, I'm gonna fix you a burrito. Oh. This coleslaw looks good, Mom. Red drum. Good coleslaw. Okay. Mm. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see y'all next week.